interpreting is starting soon. There we go. All right, so I have the amazing honor of introducing our very special guest today, Mr. Young Min Yu. And Young Min Yu is a pianist and composer originally from South Korea and now living in northern Michigan. At just the age of seven, Young Min started to learn piano and write his own music simply through YouTube videos. Thank you, YouTube. Um, despite his lack of formal training, he was admitted to the Wheaton College Conservatory of Music to study music composition. Um, and today, with over 30 million views and 100,000 followers all over social media and the internet, many of you have, uh, may have seen his videos or um, found out about him through YouTube or through a friend who shared his videos. So um, hope you all have enjoyed that uh, creative piano cover that one of the, one of his most famous ones that we showed in the beginning of this talk. Um, so without further ado, please welcome Young Min. Young Min, can you unmute yourself so that way you'll be on the big screen? Hi everyone. Hello. All right, I just pinned you so you're on the big screen so everybody should be able to see you. Um, so thank you so much, young man, for being here. Um, thanks for taking the time. But first of all, for people who haven't um, heard about you or seen you yet, um, could you just share a little bit about you know your story? So you're from South Korea, and, and what was that like growing up? Yeah, so I grew up in South Korea, and my dad was and still is a pastor in South Korea. Because my dad started his own church, we didn't have a lot of money. And what happened was because we didn't have a lot of money, we ended up having to, well, we got kicked out pretty much of our rental places. So we moved a lot. At one point when I was seven, we lived in a 50 square foot apartment and it was a one room apartment. We didn't even, even actually have a bathroom in the house. So the four of us, my parents, myself and my older sister Minyoung, when we laid down together, the room was, the house was pretty much full. And we basically, our bed was a sheet of blanket across the room. So we literally like lay down together next to each other to sleep. And because we didn't have a bathroom in the house, I hated going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I was way too scared. So sometimes I would wet my bed, which was unfortunate because it was everyone else's bed as well. But Anyways, when I was 10, that's when we even lost that spot. We ended up moving to my grandmother's house and she was actually taking care of my uncle, disabled uncle at the time. They graciously took us in and we lived with them for about one and a half years. And when we moved out shortly after that, unfortunately we heard that my uncle had committed suicide and mm -hmm. that was really, really challenging and hard for me mm -hmm. because I felt like, even though I knew it was not my fault, but I felt like there was something that I could have done better and I should have done better to help him. And I saw his agony and struggles of going through his mental illness and challenges every day. Mm -hmm. And I just felt helpless. So yeah, I felt extremely horrible about that. But in middle school, things kind of got worse for me. So what happened was I ended up um, kind of getting into this like bad path per se. All of my, a lot of my friends were heavy drinkers and smokers and extremely violent. I got involved with some school gang activities. So it was just bad. I had some serious temper issues. So although I did have great parents, which they just really wonderful, sacrificial, loving parents. But because of the financial struggles and moving a lot and transferring a lot just about every year and not having a solid group of friends, mm -hmm. my childhood kind of felt rough and unstable. Wow. That is so crazy for you to be saying that just because after you know talking to you recently, I can't even imagine that kind of past. It's like a, almost a different life. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but that's so crazy that like all that you went through. So. Can you talk a little bit about like, so you were there and in this situation, how did you get where you are today and in the US and now doing music? Like what was in between that, in that journey? So when I turned 15, this is the end of my middle school. 
my parents literally squeezed everything that they had in terms of finance and they took on more debt to allow me to come to the states to study here mm. and originally i was just gonna be here for one year ended up obviously staying longer than that but to me that was a miracle and a gift truly a gift i honestly thought though when i first came here everything was going to be perfect and because you know like in korea korean students like they have this vision of like oh living yeah. days a dream you know like everything's <laughs> just panning out for you yeah. that was the opposite of that like my first year was one of the hardest times of my life although i should have been more grateful i think there were a lot of challenges that i just did not see coming i realized all my culture language food and identity like all the i don't know just my friends and family all the things that i took my identity in were taken and stripped away from me and mm -hmm. it was just so eye-opening that 14 hour of flight completely changed my life and also made my ups my life upside down mm -hmm. so i had to get used to my new norm all the things that i all the common sense was no longer a common sense here and i felt extremely lonely i didn't have any friends to talk to i did not speak well i was just seriously like horrible at english and no one could understand me and no one could understand my heart so that was really really difficult but i realized through that time in my life everything else changed but two things that did not change on me they were god and music and that's really when I deepened my relationship with God and learned more about my faith and learned about the power of music. I felt extremely homesick. And my host family at the time, luckily, they had a little like old upright piano upstairs. So I would sneak up there and I would just play. It made me feel so much better. It gave me kind of like time to escape from the reality a little bit. And what happened was it didn't just make me feel good. But I realized it was making people that were listening to it happy as well. And mm. that's when I realized, oh, maybe music is something that I should take more seriously. And that's why when I started pursuing it as a career and I thought about like, oh, maybe this is my calling in life, my passion. So, yeah, I mean, like when I realized that I was on fire, right? Like I'm like, I can do so much. Like I'm gonna be whatever the best and like make impact, positive impact for people. But the problem was I still had no money. And when people <laughs> were telling me like, if you wanna pursue music seriously, you have to have so much money. You have to have, you know, rich parents who can pay for your way, getting most expensive, like private lessons and stuff. And I have none of that. So that's when I looked up on YouTube and started learning things online for free because that was the only way I couldn't afford any expensive lessons. And, and you know what? I ended up getting into my dream school just by <laughs> self-teaching myself through YouTube. Wow. It's Wheaton College Conservatory where I studied music composition. And quick funny story here. I only applied to one school and if that didn't work out, my plan B was to go serve in the military in Korea. So I couldn't afford to honestly pay for another application college, like application, because they're, wow. kind of they're like $150 to even apply. I'm like, forget yeah. that. Ain't nobody got money for that. So I applied to only one school and I was like, oh, I really hope that works out because my life is about to change very drastically. <laughs> wow. So very, very grateful that worked out. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, after I graduated in 2016, I've been building my online platforms and presence. And that's where I was like, oh, I think this is the best way to make impact and spread positive message through music. So I've been doubling down on, down on that since then. So it's been a blast. I've been enjoying my journey. It's been quite crazy. <laughs> that is amazing. And just so everyone knows, this is not a sponsored any interview for YouTube, even though it's amazing that, you know, you were able to, <laughs> that, that helped you so much just through yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure so many people here, actually myself included, also got to where they are in their career through the internet, through tutorials. And so mm. um, that's just amazing to hear how, you know, you had everything on the line and, mm. and it just, everything worked out that way. Um, yeah. 
And so now talking about, so you said you got into music and you felt like this was your calling. Um, can you talk a bit, a bit more about like, how was that process for you in terms of determining like this is what you want to go like fully in on and especially the type of unique style that you chose to do. Like it's very, um, oftentimes your videos are named like soundtrack or like epic style. So how, how did you identify or get inspired to do that creative style? Yeah, absolutely. So in college, I actually studied music composition. So like I studied a lot of contemporary classical music, atonal, complex, really hard to listen to. But I, okay, so when I graduated, I honestly thought I was going to go full time professional composer, like go to New York and like, or stay in Chicago to compose for different ensembles and compose for symphony orchestra. But at the end, I realized my passion was for people. I wanted to make impact to people, not create crazy, awesome, complex music to make myself feel good about myself. You know? Mm -hmm. So when I was really focusing on how can I how can I actually impact people? How can I help people? And how can I also maximize my education that I learned and the talents and skills that I've learned over the years? And I realized there is no person out there, not much going on in terms of like Christian music, someone turning Christian music into really creative instrumental music. And that's where I was like, oh, maybe that's where I can impact people. Maybe that's my little bit of a niche that I can carve in. So I started just digging in. I mean, I started small, just doing little covers here and there. And then it snowballed a little bit and then turned into a little bit bigger production. And then my friends, I mean, honestly, I won't be able to do anything that I get to do without my friends' help. They really helped me to push out some of the creative projects. And, and it's been really cool. I mean, like, people, when I have a vision, it seems like people around me really want to support that vision and make it happen. Wow. So it's been cool to see how, for me, as a believer, God is bringing all these pieces of puzzles together to make impact as a one unit. Like, we we just work as a team and pe we, people support. I'm able to do a lot more crazy stuff like this. So yeah, I definitely want to do more of like creative piano covers of Christian music because I just think it's very underserved right now. Mm, that's so true. And I think that's why it popped up on my YouTube algorithm. <laughs> I was probably listening to a lot of Christian music and it popped I up. But I actually started with pop music. I was super... Yeah virality like the viral marketing and stuff so before i did all the christian stuff i was just testing and testing and doing a lot of different things so like my goal was to make a one viral video so i don't know if you know the song called shape of you by ed sheeran yeah. Yeah. one time i made this video of like me playing shape of you with drum pads and piano and i used a wine bottle to make music with it and then i i just uncorked it and made sound out of that to make it into like a really creative one and that got about like a million views and on on facebook it got picked up by another chan channel page and i'm like you know what that's pretty good a million views and i'm like that doesn't quite sound like a true viral video so then i i came up with another like note card improvisation so my wife pulled out all this like we put 10 different pop songs into this uh and she just like randomly put, picked out uh, pop pop songs and then I played on the spot. And then that got like 20 million views. So I'm like, pop music is the way to go. I'm getting the sponsorships. I'm working with the biggest music, sheet music company in the world. I'm like, this can generate some nice revenue here. And then I realized it's just not fulfilling me. Mm. It just was not me. Like I was making impact, but like, I don't know, deep inside, I knew that there was something more that I wanted to do, like truly serve people that I want to serve. So then mm -hmm. that's when I totally ch changed my gear and created a new channel. I I still have my Music Through You channel that I did that with. I got like 30,000 followers in the span of like two months, which was really big for me at the time. Mm -hmm. and then I, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to like let that go. I totally like switched my gear, created new channel, started from the scratch again. So yeah, it was a hard call, but the right call for me. Wow. That's so good. Like, 
personally speaking, that's very inspiring that you would, you know, give up this, like all the success in a sense and just pursue something that is more meaningful to you and purpose filled. Um, And I, that actually transitions me to, to another question, just given, you know, your story has been so inspiring in terms of you came from such a hard place when you were younger. Mm -hmm. um, And like how, what drove you, especially when, I mean, you did mention community really helped you and you're really grateful for that. But when you first came to the States, you said you were alone. So Mm -hmm. like, how, how did you stay purpose-filled, focused, and motivated, especially, I think, speaking to us right now, a lot of us are not feeling motivated. We don't really know what we're supposed to do. So so could you just speak to that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I feel like (laughs) this is where I can, okay, so I'm a Christian, as you know. (laughs) This is where I have to be kind of careful. I don't want to lose people here. (laughs) But I just... I love and respect you guys so much. And you guys, I mean, like you guys work for Google. Come on, most of you, I think. So that's, you guys are like top 0.01% in the world to begin with. And I'm assuming you guys know all the tips and tricks with this self-help book and all the things, that, the morning routines, the whatever stuff that you can do to keep yourself motivated and keep on going. And I can probably allude to some of that, but the truth really is when it really boils down, I'm going to be real with you guys. For me personally, it's been my daily scripture time and prayer time. Without that, I'll be dead. Like without that, I won't be able to do what I get to do because the world is changing constantly. And my Mm. circumstance changes every day. Like this COVID, I had my uh, projection of the year and like the goals that I set and then the COVID happens and none of them matters anymore. Like that's just crazy. But we can have that shatter our worldview and identity. And for me, my foundation comes from the Christ. So I know who I am in him. So no matter what the obstacles or challenges come in my life, I am so firm in my my foundation. I won't be able to do anything without that because I question, I forget, I'm a human. Like I forget all the time. I forget to focus on the important things. And, you know, we talk about visualizing and all that, but like, when I don't even know who I am, I can visualize what I may be in the future. So mm-hmm. I want to know who I really stand for. So having that daily time, I have my morning routine as well. One hour every morning, I do the same thing. I actually, on, on my phone, I have an interval timer where I just hit the go and then I pray, I read the Bible, I do my physical therapy, read the book or whatever. And then one hour every day, I do the same thing. I read my personal statement, remind myself who I am and what I stand for and my goal for my life. And that's been really been my um, stronghold, I would say. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing. If you don't mind, I don't totally okay if you're not comfortable. Like, could you talk about that personal statement? Because I think for many of us, we're also trying to like, how what is personal statement? That's that's a very dark thing. This is it's called personal statement, and it's quite personal. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, it's right here. I'll actually share a little bit. I revised it uh, many many times. But I read this every morning. So I take five minutes every morning to read it. I have one. The first section is God. I talk about just affirmation, like who I am in God and what God wants me to do in life. And that's super Christian. I know not all of you are Christians. That's fine. I respect that. But that's just what I do. Uh, Motivation. I just talk about like my even my dad's name is here. I respect and love. uh, He's just the most amazing human being alive. So I just write up things down that inspire me and motivate me and the reminder the things that probably some like life hacks or whatever that i can do you know take vitamins and like get the maximum sun at least 20 minutes a day all that kind of good stuff and drink water and all the basic stuff to maximize your brain flow and then i have my goal here and to me like my goal is to serve people uh, especially the weak ones and the poor ones and underserved ones because mm. like, that's the background that I came from. And seeing my uncle go through that, like mental issues and like just poor, not being able to treat himself because we just didn't have much. Mm. I want to serve those people. And for me, music is the tool to be able to get there. So, yeah. Mm. Wow. 
Well, first of all, your personal statement. I feel like a lot of us after this call are going to go and think about, you know, what are the things that we want to read to ourselves and remember every morning. I definitely need something like I that. I need to update that because, like, I don't know, just I think the more I learn the, and the more I just filter things down, new things come up. So that's my probably like fourth or fifth one. So I think it's okay to just filter through stuff. You, you know, you grow, you learn, and then mm -hmm. as the past, you're always just keeping updating yeah, yourself. I think that's, that's the best. That's so good. That's so good. Um, and then, so it's the second point that you brought up was, you know, your story and how you have a passion for helping the underserved because you yourself were from that kind of community yourself. And so mm -hmm. could you, um, for people here who are trying to figure out, you know, how we want to make an impact, we want to encourage and help other people. Some of us, maybe may not have been from underserved backgrounds. Maybe we come from a life of privilege. Um, so could you just speak to, I mean, either either both sides or, or everyone at once, like how, how do you use what you've been given and your story to help encourage other people? <laughs> so first of all, that's a great question. And also, I just want to say, you guys seriously are probably one of the hardest working, most talented and gifted people I feel like I come to you guys with complete humility here because what you're doing is already making a huge impact. And I know not every one of you feel like you're doing that. And sometimes, you know, like Google pays good, you know, like we sometimes have to take the job for the money too. That's fine. But I do want to, with my complete humility, I do want to just mention a couple of things that helped me. What helped me was I, okay, first of all, I had to ask myself this question. Let's talk about money and talk about what happens when we take the money out of the equation. So the one question that I ask myself all the time and still ask myself is if I was a billionaire, I had all the money in the world. I had all the resources in the world, all the time, freedom. What would I do? If I'm being really honest with you, I think I will take a good like a month to get a private jet, travel around the world, all the spots that I've been envisioning myself in, and then, you know, buy all the stuff that I've been, you know, wanting to have. But after about a month, I think that temporary gratification will die down. Mm. And I, think I will feel a giant hole in my heart because I'm living for myself and that can only get me so far. Mm. So then I asked after that month, what would I do? I mean, genuinely, what would I do? And that's when I realized I love music and I love serving people. I want to help people. Mm. So that's when I really came to my purpose. And now the question was, yeah, I kind of know my purpose and my why and what I want to do, but how am I going to get there? I feel over overwhelmed. I mean, even within the category of music, there's so much I can do. There's so much potential. And I felt overwhelmed. And that's mm. when I realized I need to start small. Mm. Because you don't need to have a billion dollar startup, billion dollar, billion dollar company to be able to make impact in life. Even Tony Robbins, speaking of Tony, Tony Robbins, like he had to, before he can you know, feed millions of people, he had to feed that one person to begin with. And mm -hmm. that's where I wanted to focus on. So I want to encourage you guys. It's not about how big or small, you know, how, yeah, I'm like doing stuff out there on YouTube. I'm very vocal about my faith, very vocal about helping people, but you don't have to do that. It's your daily life. Sometimes it can be in a form of just texting or calling a friend of yours to show them that you care and then using and leveraging your experience and skills to help people that can benefit from you. It's serving mm -hmm. other people. So I just want to say, as long as you put your heart into it, that's what truly matters at the end. And no matter if you're running a huge company, building a team of this nonprofit organization to make impact in the world, or just you helping that one person, your heart will be so full and filled up when you live out who you're meant to be. Mm. Wow. I'm, I'm a little speechless. I, I think many people can relate. I, that was so good. And 
It's so true. I think as so many of us, we, we're always thinking about the impact, like the scale, because especially <laughs> Google, you know, we're, we measure and quantify everything. So we want to like impact this many people. We want to do big things, but you're right. Like it starts out small and it starts out with us evaluating like what, where is our heart and where do we feel pulled towards? Mm-hmm. Um, and you mentioned, you know, like when, if you were a billionaire, what would you spend it on? And um, that reminded me of many, you know, many times when I've gone on fancy like work trips or have yeah. nice things because of Google. Yeah. Um, but honestly, feeling very empty, feeling like, oh, mm-hmm. this is not fulfilling. Like I, it's nice, but what, yeah. it doesn't go beyond myself. And so, um, mm-hmm. yeah, thank you so much for speaking about that. Um yeah. My other question, so we've talked about, you know, finding purpose, using your story to encourage. Um, Could you talk a little bit about disappointment? Because you mentioned, you know, you had so much struggle, especially coming, and I'm I'm sure many people here um, Mm -hmm. are also from outside the States, you know, other foreigners, they feel, they maybe people feel like foreigners because of the way they look or the way Mm -hmm. people perceive them. How do you navigate, like, prejudice and you know identity and confidence in who you are especially in these times when the topic of injustice is is so prevalent well how did you go through that Mm, yes okay that's a really good and whoo that's a big (laughs) one but first of all i want to say this you're not alone you really are not. I think there are times that, especially coming here by myself, I felt so lonely and alone because I just felt like no one understood me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sometimes that may be true, but there are so many others who are going through the same exact thing. So you're not alone. So I want to encourage you guys to be vulnerable and find a community. That's one of the most important things for me. I, it's, I, I don't know if you're into Enneagram type one, you know, that kind of stuff, but I'm Enneagram num- like type three and wing two. Oh, really? What that means is I'm an achiever and I love helping people. But mm. for me, because I love achieving, sometimes I think I forget to be vulnerable. I want to accept myself as like a successful person. And that means I totally forget about how I'm a human and there are other people who want to be human with me and be relatable. So like these are the times when when I have my obstacles and challenges in life that makes they make help me to actually be relatable and they mm-hmm. also help me to be compassionate. Like my I just lost my 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 spiritual mentor grandma Lee. Um she died last just this past Christmas. So I had all my Christmas planned out to spend in the States with my uh, wife's family. And it was literally during the Christmas time that I had to book the flight, which was the most expensive flight ever I've ever booked. (laughs) Don't book the flight to Korea during Christmas time. It's not good. But she was actually on life support. She had a seizure, massive seizure. She was on a life support. And I think it was really this was the saddest time of my living in the united states moment um i always knew you know they're six thousand miles away but she she's on life support dying and not being able to be there as soon as possible that was really hard but what i realized was because i went through that losing my grandma i cannot relate to people that have gone through similar experiences losing their loved ones without that experience I'm not going to be able to relate to them. So some of the hardships in life can be so, so useful for us to be real with other people. And lastly, I think just being grateful. Yes, I I lost my grandma, but you know what? I am so extremely blessed with the community and people around me still. Instead of focusing on what I'm missing and don't have and the injustice, I want to focus on the things that are good. I want to focus on the still the justice that are within the society, within Mm. my life, and all the good things that are still happening, and shift my negativity focus to what is happening and how can I actually reinforce that? How can I be edifying to that positivity rather than focusing on the negativity? 
So mm -hmm. I think being grateful, just like what I said, you guys are already one point, you know, zero point zero one percent in the world. Like there had to be so many things that had to work in the right sequence for you to be there. For me, yeah, I work hard and you know, I'm diligent in what I do, but you know what? Without that right sequence, without all the things happening, like, did I really earn that? You know, I am so lucky and blessed in so many ways. Mm. So deeply. And even like people that can't even see, I think about this, so I'm going kind of like deep inside here, but I think about like people that get up in the morning and the blind people that can't see. Mm. You know, to them, my life is a miracle. They pray every day. One day they will wake up in the morning and be able to see the beautiful world. I take that for granted every morning. So basically, I'm living a mir miraculous life every day. And last year, I had horrible hand injury. Like I had three different diagnoses on my hands. So I almost had to quit my career altogether. I almost quit my music career, which I've been working on for over 20 years. And mm -hmm. You know, I've been being healed and I'm able to do my music again. But through that time, I was extremely humbled. I'm only able to do what I get to do because for me, that allows me to do that. And I don't want to take that for granted. And now I want to remember every day. Like, this is, yeah, I'm working hard. But at the end, I won't be able to do so much that I get to do without so many things happening in the right sequence and right time for me. So the life happens for us instead of feeling like the life is always trying to tackle us down and just let us down and throw curveballs. What if the life is actually happening for us? What is God for us? And all those hardships will help you to become stronger because there's no growth without the growth pain. So mm -hmm. I, I want to truly embed that into my heart and I want to encourage you guys to do the same as well. Wow, that so many nuggets that you just said. And I, I that's so good. Like the fact that, you know, we take it for granted. We do like just even being alive and the gift of life. Like this is a gift. This is a blessing. And um, that's just so amazing how, you know, you can have that perspective and and see it through that lens um because oftentimes we're like complaining about oh no like you know, first world problems in a sense <laughs> um but my last question for you is um so in terms of community i, I really want to go back to this because you mentioned it a couple times in your interview mm -hmm. but right now everyone's isolated like we're all quarantined yeah. we're all socially distanced mm -hmm. um so what are some ways that you feel that people can get connected in real relationships build mm -hmm. community and that that support network and also yeah just in general like how do we live purposefully and meaningful lives when we're all in this covid season I, i'm not gonna lie it's been hard for me to just having to talk to people on the phone especially right now when i have to quarantine myself for unexpectedly for the next couple of weeks um but the truth is i actually have been having one of the most amazing conversations with my parents through skype and through Kakao talk through video chats. We don't have to be next to each other to feel the connection because we, you know, I'm very thankful to have the internet connections all around the world now and it's free. Even when I first came to the States, it was not free. I had to use the phone call, like whatever, the international card. And it was so expensive. Every time I call someone, I feel extremely guilty. But I think it's important for us to know that we still can connect with people. Sometimes a random text, I tell you, it can be one of the most rejuvenating and life-giving thing for us mm -hmm. to say to someone, hey, I've been just thinking about you. I've been praying for you. And how are you doing? Like, can you chat sometime? Like, do you have like a minute or two, you know, sometime to just quick say hi? Those things really matter. Yeah, I've been loving my talk with my parents. They have been really thoroughly enjoying because I'm so used to talking to them on video chat anyways, because I've been here for now in the States for over 10 years, 12, 11, 12 years now. But I want to encourage everyone, yeah, be vulnerable. That's the most important thing. Like, let them know that you've been struggling too, not just them. And then create, be human with them and create that human connection. And that's yeah. when you really open up. And that's when you feel that true human connection. Um, and it can totally happen through textings or even 
through uh, voicemail or just calling them. And then that translate into later on when we can see them again, that's mm -hmm. a huge bonus to be able to see them and enrich that even more and deeper. Mm. That's really, that speaks to me personally, especially coming from, you know, an Asian background, because I think, um, I mean, Asian or not, people always struggle with, ironically, their family relationships, I think that can be the hardest. <laughs> um, totally. Oh my God. It's so hard to be vulnerable with the people who are you're closest to, especially your parents. And yeah, um, yeah. oftentimes in Asian culture, you know, you don't want to open up. You're just like, oh yeah, everything's fine. Work is good. Life is good. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Allow for that opportunity to truly connect and um, love each other because of our lack and our needs for each other support. So that's, um, that's yeah. I still struggle with being just real with my parents sometimes. I mean, like they love us so much and expect so much from us too those asian parents i tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i try to get better at it just being you know i might not be able to share all the hardships right away but just one small bit at a time mm. and it's going to be really meaningful to them when i'm vulnerable with them as well so it's been and they've been opening up to me too which is so hard for korean parents asian parents to open up and be yeah. vulnerable with their children they're always they have to be perfect you know <laughs> they're like the saints but but yeah especially having your dad as a pastor korean pastor can you imagine <laughs> so i do want to um allow a chance for people to to ask questions um this is again why it's a gvc format instead of live stream so we're going to test this out um if you have a question feel free to unmute yourself and ask if you know multiple people ask at a time try to try to figure out who's going to go first, but let's try this out. Um, does anyone have yeah. a question? Feel free to unmute and, and go ahead. All right. I will ask from the Dory question. So these are pre-submitted questions uh, beforehand. Um, the first one that got the most votes was, how did you get that grand piano onto that frozen lake for your ocean <laughs> video? Everyone is wondering, was okay. it risky and dangerous? OK, it was dangerous. <laughs> So, oh, that by far was the craziest video we've ever done. So long story short, we had two feet of snow. We had a, one of the worst snowstorms the day before the shoot. Now the lake was filled up with, on top of the ice, we had two feet of snow. And we were like, how are we going to navigate through that? But what happened was we had about 20 friends that showed up on a Saturday morning and we took the legs of the grand piano and put it on a sled and we had a snowmobile that hauled it out as like a dozen friends just pushed it from the backside and we dropped the piano like in literally in the middle of the lake about a quarter of a mile away from the land and the funny thing was this was our first time ever that we had to rake snow to cover and remove all the tracks that we made bringing uh the piano there so it was the weirdest and wildest uh wildest uh experience we've ever had but yeah basically crazy idea and crazy friends that are willing to make it possible <laughs> wow so much effort for a video That's yeah. great. and very metaphorical to you know the whole theme of ocean I know. we worked out perfect with oceans like walk on water it was a frozen water, but it's still water, so we kind of yeah. walked on water. Thank you again thank you. so much. And thank you to everybody who has joined us and taken the time. Uh, we hope this was encouraging to you and that you go out feel, feeling empowered um, and purposeful. Um, and yeah, make sure to follow Young Min on all his platforms. Thank you all today. Thank you.